Hi guys, my name is Miss Shannon and I work at Athenaeum Tribune West and today we're going to be doing a lesson about the sword in the stone. Have you ever been swept away by a story? Because I know that I have. I know that sometimes I'll read something and get so encased in what's going on that I'll just keep reading and reading until it's one o'clock in the morning and I realize that I need to go to sleep. Sometimes stories come to us by myths and legends from a long time ago. They're passed down through our generations and maybe you heard something from your grandparents or your mom or your dad or one of your friends have heard something cool. One of the most famous legends of all time is the legend of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. You've probably heard of the stories of King Arthur before and I'm sure maybe you noticed that you can always hear these stories and never ever get tired of it. They never feel old. Today we're going to be talking about how Arthur removed the famous sword in the stone and took his place as the rightful king of England. The Sword in the Stone In the days of old, Britain was ruled by King Uther Pendragon. The dragon was his emblem and he was a mighty warrior and a great ruler. He was not only the greatest man in battle, but he was wise too, for he followed the counsel of Merlin, a great magician and seer. Merlin could cast magic spells and change shapes to look like an animal or another person. He was called a seer because he could see the future for everyone, that is, except himself. Uther Pendragon had a son named Arthur. One day, when Arthur was still young, Merlin had a terrifying vision. He foresaw that Uther Pendragon would soon die from a plague that was sweeping the land and saw that because Arthur was only a baby, many of the other noblemen would try to take his place as king. Some might even try to harm him and war would break out. So Merlin secretly gave Arthur into the care of a noble knight, Sir Ector, who did not know he was protecting the king's son and heir. Sir Ector raised Arthur along with his own son Kay just as Merlin had predicted, Uther Pendragon died and the British lords began to feud with each other over who should be king. For years, Britain was torn with warfare and strife. When Merlin felt that the time had come, he went to the Archbishop of Canterbury and said that if the Archbishop could call the lords of the land together to London at Christmas time, a miracle would reveal who the rightful king of Britain was. The Archbishop did as Merlin had asked. On Christmas Day, all the lords attended church. When they came out, they found in the churchyard a square marble stone. In the middle of it was an anvil, and into the anvil was thrust a sword. The stone gripped the naked sword by the point, and on the blade was written in gold letters. Whoever pulls out this sword from the stone and anvil is the true-born king of Britain. Each lord tried to pull the sword out, but failed. News of the so sword in the stone spread with an invitation to all knights of the land to come to try to pull out the sword. A jousting tournament was announced for New Year's Day. The knights would come and compete on the jousting field and then they would attempt to remove the sword. All the great lords attended a church service on New Year's Day. Among them were Sir Ector and his son Sir Kay, who had only been recently made a knight. Arthur, who was only 15 years old, and completely unaware of his kingly birth, acted as Kay's assistant or squire. After the church service, all rode into a merry company to the jousting field. When Sir Kay realized that he had left his sword behind, he asked Arthur to ride back and get it for him. Arthur rode as fast as he could to the lodging, but found the door was locked. Arthur had seen the sword in the stone, but did not know of the legend surrounding it. He said to himself, I will ride to the churchyard and take that sword and the stone, for my brother shall not be without a sword this day. Arthur was alone in the churchyard, for everyone else was at the jousting tournament. He grasped the sword by the hilt and gave it a quick, light pull, and out it came. Arthur jumped onto his horse and rode to the jousting field and gave Kay the sword. Now being a knight, Kay had been told the meaning of the sword and the stone. He recognized it at once and knew what it meant for Arthur. Sir Ector was amazed. Now, said Sir Ector to Arthur, you must be king of this land. I, said Arthur, astonished, how could that be? No man could have pulled out this sword unless he was the rightful king of this land, said Sir Ector. Now, let me see whether you can put the sword back in as was or pull it out again. That is quite easy, said Arthur. There, 
in the frosty churchyard stood the white stone with the anvil, but with no sword in the anvil. Arthur thrust the sword back into the anvil, which held the blade snugly. To see that there was no trick, Sir Ector tried to pull it out. He could not move it at all. Now you try, he said to Sir Kay, who pulled with all of his might, but could not move it. Now you, Sir Ector said to Arthur. Very well, said Arthur, and he pulled it out easily. Sir Ector and Sir Kay knelt down before Arthur. My own dear father and brother, cried the nervous boy. Why do you kneel before me? Sir Ector told Arthur that he was really not his son, and that Merlin had brought him to him, to him as a baby to be raised in his household. The three men went to the archbishop to tell them what had happened, and Arthur took the sword in both hands and laid it on the altar where the archbishop was standing. Then he knelt down, and the grandest knight present stepped forward to make Arthur a knight himself. The archbishop set the crown of Britain on Arthur's head, and Arthur swore to treat all high and low with justice all the days of his life. The people threw up their caps and shouted, Hurrah! At last, a true king had come to punish the wicked and defend the poor. King Arthur became a legend all throughout England, and the world and people like us still think about him today and wonder what it must have been like to be the boy who pulled the sword from the stone and become king. All right, guys, I want you to use your own imaginations and see if you can find things in your house or your backyard with your parents' permission to create your own sword in the stone and send us some pictures. I'm gonna show you some of the materials we're gonna need, so make sure that you ask your parents to help you find some of these if you can't find them yourself. You need some scissors, a Sharpie or some sort of marker, some tape, which I have one with its own cutting mechanism in front. Make sure that if you have something like this, you're being careful, you don't wanna hurt yourself. Ask your parents if they have kitchen foil and if you're okay with, if they're okay with you using it, you don't wanna do this without their permission. And you're going to need some sort of cardboard. I have a whole bunch of cardboard here, but all you're going to need is one piece. So only like one page of the box if you do have this. And you can use uh, other things if you don't have a cardboard box. You can use a cereal box, which is made of cardboard. If you have a notebook with cardboard on the back, you can rip that off and use that. If you don't have any cardboard lying around, you can use a paper towel roll and uh, a toilet paper roll. If you grab those two, I can show you how to make a sword out of those as well. So we're gonna get started. If you have cardboard around your house, the first thing you're going to do is cut out two shapes of a sword. You're going to fold them in half a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect so that it has that ridge on it so it kind of looks more like a sword. All right, so for those of you that have cut out your pieces, I'm going to show those of you with a paper towel roll what to do. You take yours, and on one of the sides, you're going to cut it at an angle so it has a point on the top of it to look more like a sword. Once you have that ready, then you're going to put this to the side and take your toilet paper roll. And this might be a little hard, so if you ask your parents, I'm sure they will help. You're going to take one of the sides and cut it down on both sides so that it opens up like this. And then take the sides and fold them down and make it into a circle because it might not fold into a perfect circle. So once you have it like this, these will be the sides of your sword and we're going to do something with the insides. So we're gonna put that to the side. Now for the sword with cardboard, what we're going to do next is you're going to take your pieces of cardboard that you have left over and you're going to make two rectangles like this. Once you have the two of these, you're going to take the uh, last piece of your cardboard that you're going to need and you're going to cut out a piece like this. Now, as you can tell, it is very, very long compared to the ones that you just cut out. And the reasoning is because this is going to be the top of your sword. Once you have this, you can go ahead and put that to the side. Now, your next step is to take your two pieces of rectangular cardboard and your long piece and you're going to put the long piece in between these two pieces so it should clamp down on it like that make sure it's even on each side doesn't have to be perfect but once you have it like this your next job is to take your tape and tape it all up so you can go ahead and pause here and go ahead and tape it for those of you that are using your paper towel rolls and your paper or your toilet paper roll 
Now that you have your little circle, what you're going to do is use the bottom part that you did not cut and kind of wiggle it inside. Now for me, what I did was I took this, a part of this and I bent it in with my finger so that it was a little bit smaller. And then I bent the whole roll a little bit so it was more like an oval instead of a circle so that I could just slide it right inside. And as you can tell on the bottom, there was a part of my toilet paper roll that did break a little bit more than it should have. But once you got that nice in there, it should look just like this. And I also put some tape around the bottom so that it wouldn't rip anymore and it would still be secure. So you can do that, okay? So you should have it look like this, the top part of your sword and the bottom sides with your little hilts. Once you have this, you don't need to use tape if you don't want to, but if you would like to put it around the bottom so it doesn't rip when you're swinging around, if you want to put tape kind of on the, um, the sides right here so that these parts don't rip anymore either, so on this side here and the back side here, you can do that. But once you have it like this, your sword is basically done, and I'm going to show you what to do next. Now, for those of us that are using cardboard, your pieces should be taped together, which should look like this. It should be taped all the way around to make sure that it doesn't fall apart. And make sure that you're taping the bottom so that it doesn't open anymore. So my entire handle is taped, and so is the top part here on each side so that it stays in place. All right, this is what it should look like. After that, you're going to take your two pieces of your sword, and you're going to be taping these guys together with what you had just taped. You take your two pieces, you take your handle, and you're going to slide it in between the two of them. Just like that. But make sure that it's not down on the bottom. It's kind of pushed up just a little bit so that it looks more like a sword and it'll be easier to tape this way because it makes it more secure. So now you can go ahead and tape this entire area all around so that this, the sides stay together with your top part. All right, once you're done with that, go ahead and resume the video, okay? All right, now that your sword is completely taped, it should look like this. There should be a lot of tape around the bottom so that way it doesn't fall. Uh, mine looks a little bit bulky over here on this side because I couldn't get the side quite taped down like I had wanted, but that's okay. So now that your sword looks like this, it will not fall apart if you shake it around and try to use it. But yeah, now your next step is to take some tin foil and wrap it around. Make sure that when you're using this though, you ask your parents if it's okay and if you need help cutting it, ask them too. I'm sure they'll, they'll help. But so you're gonna take a piece out and you are going to wrap it around your sword. So I have my piece right here. You're going to take it and just kind of cover your sword in any way that you think would look nice. So here's my bottom half and I'm gonna cut a smaller piece of tape or sorry, tin foil and wrap it around the top just like this. So that now I have a completed sword look. Oh, I guess maybe my bottom's not as covered. But yeah, so it's gonna look something like this and you can put tin foil all over so that there's no gaps or anything like that. You can put some down here and if you need to use tape to make sure that it stays in place, you can do that as well. And you're gonna do the exact same thing with your toilet paper roll. You're gonna take some out, some tin foil, and you're going to go ahead and wrap it around that as well. And like I said, if you would like to put some in the top part of it so that way it doesn't show as much you can do that or you can use tape to make sure the tin foil doesn't fall off in any way but you're just going to wrap it around the entire thing all the way down to make your sword once that is done now you have your swords and you can go on and play and name them and all of that but if for some reason your parents say no to using tin foil that is totally okay but you can go ahead and use your Sharpies or your markers or paints if you have any in your house and paint your swords, decorate them any way that you want. And you can do this if you have tin foil as well. You can make maybe the bottom half look like this and then decorate the top or you can decorate, you know, the top or cover the top part and decorate the bottom to make it look nicer. You can just decorate the bottom part of your sword itself, whatever you would like. Make sure if you're using paint or anything like that, you're letting it dry before you use it because you don't want to swing wet paint all over the place. That's not going to be good for your parents to have to clean up. But yeah, that's the end of the activity. I hope you guys enjoyed and we miss you very much. Bye.